Julian Kostoff, welcome to An Actor Despairs. How are you doing, brother? I'm good. How are you doing, Ron? I am doing fantastic, man. It is a <laughs> immense honor to have you on, man. When I saw Another Mother's Son, the work you did in that, man, I mean, it was, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it's obviously such a heavy subject matter. And I, I don't think people were quite aware of the true story that, you know, Brits did go, go to camps and, you know, they yeah. did send their own and, but what you did playing that character, man, I mean, it's what a journey. And just, I, I felt so much for you and I, you, you stole the movie, man. And I mean that in the, there were so much amazing actors and actresses in that, but you know, that's, that's the beauty of acting is you can come in and, you know, if, if you're lucky, if something's written even decently enough, but that's the testament to great acting is, is rising, whether it's good or bad at uh, writing <laughs> yeah. is making it great. And, and you're incredible. And, and now shadow and bone, Berlin Station. Oh, thanks, I mean, man. your career is incredible, dude. And you're like a you're James Bond. You're an international <laughs> superstar, dude. You got like seven passports. You know, we just got to get you a tuxedo and, much. and in front of Barbara Broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thank you, thank you for that the lovely intro, man. I yeah, that was a crazy movie. Uh, it's it was weird, and I've spoken about this that it's it's so rare to get these meaty kind of emotional. Uh, parts that are not stereotypical for when you're an Eastern European yeah. um, actor in kind of the West industry. And it comes down to like the, uh, I guess the cold war propaganda and it's it, like whatever has remained in the, uh, in the media and kind in of in the like Western the, eyes of, of pop culture. Yeah. 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 Because obviously back in the day, you know, uh, people, my parents, cause I'm born in 1989, which is literally when the, the regime. I'm 90. Changed. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and so my parents couldn't really go beyond Hungary or Poland or East Germany uh, for their entire lives until they were 30. Wow. Like, imagine that, dude. Imagine not being able to travel. And and I know that they've been fed propaganda on this side as well, obviously. And they're yeah. like, oh, in the West, people rape each other and they murder each other and there's so much crime. And in, in, in the Eastern Bloc, there was actually zero almost zero crimes and whatever, if there was a, psych a psychopath killer or whatever, they would just sweep it on the carpet and they'd be like, there's no murders in, yeah. in the Soviet Union or like in Eastern Bloc. Totally. So it's that, you know, and they were like, uh, so, and there, Sting has this song about, um, I don't know if you know, the, the Russians love their children too. No, I don't know. The it. First time, it, I, I, like back in the day, like before 89, what this is what happened on our side, but what happened on the other side was, uh, the UK was telling people that Russians hate their kid, like that, oh really? They, no well, way! Not really, but like they, yeah. they were all evil people, and uh, and and Sting was once doing an interview or something for, uh, and then he got in the in the eighties and got to see Russian TV, wow, uh, for like a minute or two, and saw that there's a cartoon playing, wow, right after the news, and he was like, wait, cartoons. Who are these cartoon? Wait, the Russians love their children too. Oh man! <laughs> he talks about it in interviews, and he had an epiphany, and then he wrote this beautiful song, and he's like, "We're not enemies. They love their kids too. They're just people." It's a great so, name for a movie or a play, you know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Dude, yeah. That's a good idea. We'll have to write it together. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll, and you play Sting. I'll I'll play I'll play the Russian children. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> uh, you play the animator. Yeah. Um, no, but like, it, it's just a good, and obviously I'm Bulgarian, so I had nothing to do with Russia, but, uh, but just that we were part of that, uh, the Soviet uh, political satellite, yeah, yeah. system. Yeah. That, that we're kind of all branded as one thing and, and always an enemy and like a bad, like, so, so it's very difficult to, to find roles that have a positive connotation that are not played by Brits or Americans, because if it's, if it's something heroic, normally it wouldn't yeah. be even offered to us, but if it's a negative stereotype, that can be reinforced like a secret service, like a bad, uh, you know, um, soldier or something, then that, that, those are the things that are changing right now. And yeah. this, another mother's son was one of those unicorns, I call them, because never in my life have I ever had an audition like that. And all of a sudden I had it. Um, but I think it also has to do with my personal, um, my, the way I think about these things and the way I approach these things and the way my mind is set up, because if I, keep thinking that I'm never going to be seen for anything meaningful and that I'll probably not be seen for anything meaningful. Yeah. I'm in that I have the courage thought, to believe that it's yeah. possible. Yeah. And it, it happened for me during a, a, an acting studio moment where the teacher was like, embrace your 
vulnerability and embrace your Bulgarianness. Yeah. Because I was always like, oh, I'm, I have this American accent. I'm going to. You yeah, know, I have to assimilate into uh, yeah. totally. Yeah. And, and then um, I was too cool for school. And he was like, no, do it in a Bulgarian accent. And I did it. And then two weeks, and, and I had this epiphany during the scene and this breakthrough. And um, I was so vulnerable and open and messy. And it was so great um, that after that scene, it, it kind of clicked for me that I shouldn't be ashamed of who I am. Yeah. Um, and I've had this, and this is what the 20s are for, I guess, to work out your own shit. And, and through acting, yeah. I've done a lot of that work. Um, <clears throat> in the studio because that's where you kind of uh, work on your own personal stuff as well and how it relates how the work relates to your life and where where you are in the work in comparison to your life and vice yeah. versa yeah. is what is are those crazy deep questions that we we always get asked at the studio so that's um at amaw so that's amazing that uh that happened and then literally two weeks later i got the audition for another mother's son after wow. i embraced who i truly am that's so serendipitous and beautiful, man. And, and, and yeah. Kim said in so many ways and, and, and speaking of who you are, you know, before we get into the substance of all these incredible projects you've done, let's get to know you, Julian Costa from <laughs> Bulgaria. Talk to me about growing up, man. So what, what was it like growing up in Eastern Europe? You know, like, did you, were your, were your parents artists? Like, how did this whole thing happen? Talk to me about your well, childhood. Basically, it's so, uh, it was a very interesting time when I was born. And I, you know, the most interesting and, and years of struggle were in the 90s, in the beginning, when we were in transition from one regime. Post-Cold War, you know, yeah. 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 And, and so one of my first, some of my first uh, memories um, uh, were, uh, you know, with my mom and we're buying chewing gum in a store and I'm like four or five. Yeah. And, and I, rem and I, uh, and I, I'm hearing, cause I probably didn't, I didn't know the numbers, but I was hearing, Oh, the, the price of chewing gum is 70 P uh, 70 uh, with what pen, uh, not pence. What's the equivalent in the U S uh, uh, dollars. Cents. Yeah. Cents. Oh, sorry, cents. So, yeah. yeah. That'd be way too expensive <clears throat> gum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's, it's 70, uh, it's 70 cents. And then the next day it was a uh, dollar 70. And then the next day it was $17. And the next day it was $70. And, oh my I, and, God. It, and my little brain clocked that. And I was like, Hey mom, what, why was chewing um <laughs> so much less, you know, yeah. less expensive. And yesterday. why didn't we invest? <laughs> <laughs> invest in chewing gum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she explained inflation very bluntly. And she said that because the prime minister is an asshole, but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. But but it was inflation, and like literally, my mom and dad, like we used like during the 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 um, the Cold War, um, it, well during the Eastern Bloc uh, times, they would get bananas and tangerines and uh, oranges only on Christmas. Yeah, it would be like like, but people would still have local grown stuff that was really organic food and made like the the life the the quality of life was really high. Uh, in terms of that, but uh, most people, they weren't poor, but they, they had, everybody almost had the same amount of money Yeah, and they could always afford to go on two vacations a year. Um, everybody had a job. So my, when my grandparents talk about the communist times, they're like, Oh, it was so great. Um, but obviously it's an author, uh, authoritarian regime. Yeah. Uh, so totally. it's not really communism. So yeah, it's the good things and the bad things. Um <clears throat> But it, it seems it wasn't that bad, but people were forbidden to wear jeans, for example, because it's American wow. clothes. You know so I mean? there was like, this so kind of like anti-West notion that was kind of still in your parents' mind a bit, or, you know, did that- No, trickle? my parents' generation was totally rebellious towards that whole thing. So uh, my was. parents would listen. Oh yeah, my, my parents would smuggle in um, records and they would listen to Bee Gees and Beatles. Oh, and, awesome. Yeah, so they, and they would watch movies like that, um, pirated or whatever. With, yeah. There was this one Bulgarian person, this woman who would do every character. So the way I, I watched The Lion King was on a tape with the dumbest voiceover while she's translating in real life, in real time. No way. And, and like making mistakes, stumbling, going back. And, and singing could, all the songs. Yeah. That, oh my God. Oh, no, 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 not oh. the songs. Not the songs. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say. God, not the songs. That's um, incredible. But it was a very, you know, I had a Walkman when I was yeah. nine and then a, a, a CD, uh, what was it called? A, a Walkman. And then you had the, the, the one with the C CD. CD player. A CD player. Yeah. Um, um, and so I, in a way I had s some of my childhood was the equivalent of an American childhood in the seventies or yeah. the eighties. 
even though it was in the 90s. Yeah, and totally. Later, it's so weird that we still listen to 80s music on the radio and 90s music. Yeah. Because they didn't listen to it enough back then. And now that whole generation still listens to that music and isn't it refuses to catch on because music now is shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> totally is shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so uh, it has its moments, but uh, you know, eighties, nineties was just crazy. And, uh, and so there's a lot of very, you know, I, the first time they introduced cartoon network, I was like four or five. Wow. And I learned English from watching, from watching cartoon network. That's because we cool. only what, had what was it like Dexter's yeah. Laboratory? Oh, yeah. and Dexter's Laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> Even though he's German, had a German accent. But you know, actually, a Bulgarian uh, cartoon artist drew most most of those. I didn't know that. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. Um, so, uh, so you was, did uh, you did grow up with like Western pop culture? Oh yeah, like yeah. the Predator. My my grandpa had a uh, uh, um, a tape of that, so I would I was five and I would watch it alone every uh, afternoon when they leave me alone. Wow. Um, watch the predator and piss myself <laughs> and just it was crazy but uh yeah the interesting thing is i i really i was four 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 or five or six and i learned english from from cartoon network johnny bravo and dexter's lab and yeah dogs and uh and i would just watch it on repeat because they only had they had only bought 20 uh, episodes of, of, of yeah everything. first indication would repeat, and all, yeah. like every two hours they would repeat the same cartoons so i would watch it again and be like okay he's talking about this and saying this word da, 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 da. and contextually so little, you were able to figure it out like that after six months yeah or a year Dude, I don't know. this uh, america is a joke man <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so ashamed I'm, i apologize for all americans for <laughs> <laughs> we, i mean we we can't even like you know we go to paris and we're like where's the louvre you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the audacity, you know? No, if someone came here and spoke French <laughs> and said, you know, where's Times Square? We'd be like, go fuck yourself, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's back where you came from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I get it. I get what you mean. But yeah. I mean, it's it's the same with all big empires, um, the UK and Spain and um, France and, and America, um, China, Russia. Yeah. They tend to not want to learn foreign languages with Russia as well like you're not just bilingual you're quadlingual how the fuck did that happen <laughs> well i studied spanish in a in a spanish learning high school in bulgaria okay. um uh, i really invested in the first year but then after that we had um uh, the, the the best teacher basically left us and then she came back later on but by, by that point i had dropped the ball yeah but hablo español pienso muy bien y puedo hablar sin sin problemas con con la gente Si, si, si necesito. I don't know if you speak any Spanish. Más o menos, so. <laughs> yeah. Donde uh, está la biblioteca? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Back where you came from. I <laughs> star key. I star key. <laughs> oh man. So so yeah, I studied Spanish and then I went to Rome um, for this workshop once upon a time. And then I uh, fell in love with the city and the people and the food and the language. And it's still yeah. similar to Spanish that I went back to stay with them for two weeks. Uh, like an friends. exchange family. No, no, no. Like I was 21. At that oh, time. you had, oh, okay, I was already an actor. Yeah. I was okay. doing an acting workshop there. And, um, and in two weeks, I kind of picked up Italian to a very decent conversational level. Probably, I probably sound like a, a bit of a Spanish person talking Italian because I still remember some of the, you know, the, it's very close, but that's also like a, um, romance languages, you know. So I went to Rome for two weeks and I kind of after a week, I picked up Italian yeah. uh, on a conversational level because it's very similar. It's romance languages. Uh, and, and, and yeah, so I uh, I kind of speak Italian as well. And that's uh, incredible. Dude. And I think what, what, it, what it, this kind of segues into is uh, understanding yourself as a um I almost don't want to say product, but as, as, as an actor, you need to figure out your marketing and your niche. Right? And I figured out that I look, well, how did you, let's, you know, cause yeah. I, and, well, how you were an, so you, at first you grew up, right. You got into <clears throat> the cartoon network, you developed that and you were into Western pop culture. How did yeah. the so natural, <laughs> in, uh, obviously, you know, loving cartoons that that is loving art, but how did yeah. the, the incremental increase of art and ultimately decision to go into acting. How did, how did that happen for you, Julian? It was very unorthodox. Uh, I, 
as you said, I, I I was so much into cartoons and then into Star Wars and then into and you're a swimmer as well, and, right? Yeah, I, and I I started swimming when I was ten, and then by the age of twelve, I already had was like getting uh, medals at the national championships, and so that kind of uh, this and school became my focus. And um, you know, I was national champion, and I I went to the Balkan Games and got a bronze medal. So I had a pretty decent career in swimming. Yeah, were the Olympics 19, on your mind ever? Or? They were because that's that's right about when I was twenty, and I went to. So study. would that be Greece then, or would that be Beijing? No, London. London, no way. That's Globe, right. Yeah. Wow. So uh, I basically what happened was I was already in in Tilburg in the Netherlands, uh -huh. uh, where I studied um, business management. And I was going the con conventional path to, at first. Uh, yeah, but no, yeah, uh, yeah business management, because yeah. my dad yeah. is in business and my mom is a judge. So, so that was, was you were on a more, you know, you uh, non artist path at first, we'll just put it that way. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I totally did not know what I wanted to do in my life at 19. And I think most nobody does. Yeah. Um, and it's so crazy that society is teaching us that, oh, no, there's no time. To play. Yeah, Come on, no, you got to study, you got to work mid, five years, yeah. you got to have a kid, you got to, yeah. you know. And you're, um, and, and you are a kid, you, you don't yeah. realize it. 18 years, you're just a kid. I'm still a kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a 31 year old boy. <laughs> same. same. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I was 21 and I was like in, uh, I was in Holland. I was traveling to uh, Eindhoven where I, I, I trained at a club called PSV Eindhoven with the, with the Dutch, you know, yeah. at, that, at that time, like there were seven world champions in our team. <laughs> wow. Uh, and so, <clears throat> But I, I didn't really love it as much. Um, and I was like, why do I do something I don't love, sacrifice my social life, which I've never had or barely yeah. had, that I so crave? Yeah. Um, and why would I do that? And then if I go to the Olympics, I'll be 56. Yeah. Or 45th. And like, and not that, that I don't want to put, it's not, it's a huge achievement to go to the Olympics and do that. But what I mean is I, my heart was in there. Yeah, so you, you got to, just like acting, you got to fucking want it, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And and I still didn't know what I wanted. And then I quit swimming. And then the next year I got all depressed and I got all, um, um, I almost developed asthma because I wouldn't leave my room and there was so much dust. Wow. And, and, and I was like uh, depressed, really. And then I was watching a lot of movies and a lot of TV series again. Um, uh, I remember, what was it? Gossip Girl, The Vampire Diaries. Yeah. And, <laughs> Classic CW. Of, Oh yeah. And, um, because, and the dark Knight. Oh uh, yeah. By that point I've seen like 40 times probably. And, yeah. and I learned Heath Ledger's monologues by heart just by rewatching it. And then all of a sudden I decided to tape myself, do the, the, the Joker and, and I mimicked him and whatever. And I, I watched the bad. Which scene? Like, uh, well, uh, you want to know how I got these scars? Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. No, my, my favorite one is um, where he goes um, and talks to all the gangsters. Oh, in, in the ma ma uh, pencil magic trick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, and um, uh, yeah, so that, that scene I did and then I was like, oh, I'm, I'm not half bad. Maybe, yeah. maybe oh, shit. acting is a profession that I could maybe do. Yeah. So I was like, this is, this is interesting. Let's, let's figure it out. And, and where were your very, parents with all this? Were they oh, cool? they had no clue. They, they did it. No wow. Clue. No, at that point, um, I just gave them a bullshit story about why I want to move universities. I said my English is downgrading in Holland or something. And, yeah. and I was like, I need to go to London. And they believed me. And they were like, yeah, just fix your own things. Transfer your credits. Do whatever you want. And Which I, and I, I did that. Under, uh, you know, a lie could seem like a good business move because capitalism is is London and New York City at this point, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, London was, yeah, I was like, where do I move? Where do I go? I was like, yeah. Amsterdam, I don't speak Dutch. Uh, pff, yeah. Makes no sense. I'm going to go to London. And so I moved to London to another university, which I graduated eventually. Um, and I got my business management diploma, but, um, but I was like, no plan B. So I burned my diploma and I was like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be in the wild I, style. Yeah. Yeah. And I, my parents and I was like, Hey, uh, you know what? I'm going to be an actor. And they were shocked uh, as were all my friends. Cause I was, 
I'm literally the, uh, as much as I was always brave in social interactions, I was always very, the shyest, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But kind of also the bravest at the same time. Yeah. I really um, relate to exactly what you're saying. I didn't, I found my voice later and then people were like, oh yeah, we see now. But early, you know, it, we tend to exactly. live in our heads as actors and, and <clears throat> you know, it. Yeah. Stage fright also is like a, and it, what, 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 to some people, obviously it comes natural to, to be performers, especially to, um, to singers yeah. and dancers. But I think with um, acting, uh, it's, it's a little bit different and a lot of actors are actually very shy people. And oh yeah. They, they, they struggle talking as themselves, you know, yeah. they, they can talk, they can, they can do any crazy character, but then. Yeah. Some of the talking. best character actors are, are the shyest humans, yeah. you know? And so, uh, you know, I went to London and I started walking the streets um, and it was in a cold October week. And I was just walking the streets cause I thought I'm going to get noticed, obviously. Duh. Yeah. And I uh, didn't get noticed. And then I was like, no, I'll go to a, I'll be an extra. And that's when I get noticed. Cause yeah. the directors, there's a director there and you know, there's only 20, 30 people. So the director's job is to spot talent. Right. So I'm like, totally. yeah, they're good professionals. So totally spot me. <laughs> so <laughs> I was a, an extra in a bunch of things. Uh, even in, um, in a James Bond movie. Which one? Daniel Craig walks behind me. Uh, I, we, we watched it with my dad the other night. Um, Skyfall. Oh, the best one. One of the, uh, dude, <laughs> Sam yeah. Mendes. That must yeah, have just man. been cool to have been on that set. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I don't even think I saw anybody except Daniel Craig walking behind me, but because we were on the on the tube on the Metro. Yeah. So on the underground. And there's this big scene where he goes and chases um, Javier uh, Bardem. Javier Bardem. Yeah. yeah. Classic scene. Uh, Silva. Yeah. yeah. So it's really cool. Uh, that was cool. And then I. And then I got a call because I was already working on my accent because it was a bit of a mongrel accent at the time. And I was like, I need to kind of find a niche. And yeah. I thought at that 2012, um, I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll do this American accent and then I hopefully will get some parts. And I did, you know, I was Secret Service uh, Agent Harwell. In, in White House Town, 20, right? Yeah, in 24, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and London Has Fallen, yeah. I London Has Fallen, yeah, 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 yeah. I did a- Different franchise, right, but yeah, same movie. Same concept, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Company. Yeah, yeah. Oops, uh, so sorry, was, Channing. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was with uh I had a scene with Aaron Eckhart there, which was really cool. He was really fun to work with, even for like you know, an hour. And did you have an agent at that time when you got that or, or yeah, no? no, I already had fired a few agents by that time. Um what, for the actors listening, you know, because the London, you know, it can be so scene. tough because I feel like, you know, in America, obviously we do have, you know an upper class, but like the aristocracy is something that is still very much in existence in the UK and yes. the, ped the pedigree of drama schools and all of that is so hard because it, unless you go to a central, a Bristol, a RADA, a Lambda, it can be so yeah. hard to penetrate agents. So but how you did you- I'll tell you though, there was a very interesting moment I had on set with uh, Khadif Kirwan, who's an amazing actor, a um, uh, British actor. And we were talking, uh, we did Flack with Anna Paquin. Oh, which awesome. Is, uh, awesome series. Pe uh, I strongly recommend it to people. And, um, and so we were playing these <laughs> footballers um, from Chelsea or whatever. And uh, him and I got to talk about drama school. And he went to one of the best drama schools. I forget which one. But he said, you know what? From my class in drama school, there's only three people who are still actors. Me. Wow. And uh, Hannah John Common, who's uh, the lead on Ready Player One. And, wow. Uh, okay. You know a bunch of other movies, like The Wasp in Ant Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like she's yeah. doing. She's doing. She's a movie star, essentially. Yeah. So one guy is a super successful TV and movie actor, and the other one is a movie star. Yeah. And the third, you know, out of twenty five people in their class or something. Yeah. So it's like, it, it, and he's thirty one. So yeah. in ten years, all of that happened. Like everybody wow. dropped out. Um, so, and here, here I was working with him and then another guy also went to drama school, but the fourth guy didn't. So it's like a bit of a mix of, I think the successful actors are the ones who never quit yeah. because if you just keep going, you'll build a career eventually. It yeah. might, and that's doesn't always happen on your time and yeah. your time with other people and be like, well, by the time I was, by the time Jennifer Lawrence was 30, 
Like that's a nonsense comparison. Dude, you know? I do. I'm glad to hear you. Cause I've been doing that all day, man. You know, it's like it, existing in this podcast and interviewing actors and comparing where I am. It's something, mm-hmm. you know, compare and despair is what they say. And I, it, I appreciate that comment, man. I, I've I never heard of that, but yeah, definitely yeah. don't, don't do that. Cause yeah. you know, I was 21 and yeah. I, I, I was starting out in the industry. I hadn't, I knew nothing about, I, I didn't know any actor. I didn't know about agents. I didn't know about casting directors. I didn't know I need classes. I thought I was an actual and I'm going to just do it like that. Yeah. Well, it's not hard, right? You go and say the words, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Hey, it's easy. I'm going to do it. And, but the thing is, um, uh, at 21, I thought I was too old to go to drama school. Wow. And I was like, well, there's no point of me wasting three years of my life. And yeah in or like risking all those things and and i'll be 25 and by that point nobody's going to hire me like this was my thought process and i i i very wrong understand it. yeah <laughs> very very wrong and then it took me two years to um to to kind of make mistakes and i registered in a lot of mandy uh casting Cold pro spot yeah uh, spot, 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 spot spotlight uh, is what you guys call star it, now right? star yeah. now yeah First okay star now for short films and student films just together and then my goal was to get on spotlight, but you couldn't get unless you trained for three years or had three speaking parts with credits on IMDb with names. I didn't even know that part. Wow. Yeah, and now it's, I think, four credits. Wow. And so I got lucky because I auditioned for this agent um, and they were a huge child agency, uh, child performer agency, and and they were starting to, to get into uh, adults. adults. Yeah the first time and so he liked me i did a monologue from uh, dicaprio's monologue in the beach oh the shark. yeah and <laughs> that's a fun one and then and then they enjoyed it and they were like yeah we want to sign with you but there's one um one rule we you have to be on spotlight for us to represent you but don't worry we have a deal with them so we will even get you half price and we'll get you on spotlight wow and i was like what after i was rejected already once yeah I didn't have credits and then I screamed so loud and I, I can, it's probably one of the best reactions I've ever had to news. I was like, yeah, search yeah. the National Youth Theater doing a course at the time. And I got an email, welcome to Spotlight. And I was like, yeah, oh, dude, <laughs> I'm an actor now. <laughs> oh, I yeah. Love that. And, and I was so excited. And, and then in one year I had zero auditions or one audition from that yeah. agent, but, yeah. and then you get another agent and then you, I got my first Gillette commercial Nick Knight management. Um, he did some really good, gave me some really good opportunities and I'm forever grateful. And like, yeah. I did, so I did, um, um, a, a Gillette commercial that was like, yeah, I was like, Oh, I'm finally doing an acting, like almost an <laughs> acting job. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden at the end of the year, they called me from Bulgaria. They wanted an American actor to, uh, to do this number four in the call sheet role in a $2 million, $3 million zombie movie. And I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had, I was recommended by a friend and by the casting director. And then the producer uh, was a friend and he was just auditioning me on the phone. He's a friend now, but then he was auditioning me on the phone um, just to hear my accent. And then when he, when I passed his test, he, uh, he just called me and then, and I was getting $300 to play one of the, the second male lead in the zombie movie wow. playing an American soldier. And I was like, yes, I'm an actor. Yes. Oh, what was the project called? Uh, it's called Code Red. Code Red, okay, awesome. Yeah. Uh, by Valery Milev and produced by Bashar Rahal, and uh, um, and it was a fun movie. I got to shoot some weapons and drive cars and, and like escape zombies, and and then I get eaten by a zombie, and then I get killed again by the lead guy with a knife to the head. So I had two epic deaths where the uh, the zombie man eats my face. So we actually had to almost bang heads and be just very precise. Wow. So I risked my uh, my nose for that one. Um, and but, that must've been so cool. I mean, getting on that level of set, that's the, that's the first big step, man, you know? Yeah. And I was like, dude. And then, then they got me in another movie to play a, the bad British guy, uh, the assistant of the bad British guy <laughs> in a comedy in like a parody comedy. It was very fun. And so after that, I did this other movie for the sci-fi channel, just a very small role. And were you simultaneously, a, 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 I don't want to say attacking, but uh, pursuing the American market as well as, you know, the British market or At was that it- point I had, I had done two years in London, just figuring it out uh-huh. and doing short films and extra work and commercials. And then this happened. So I moved to Bulgaria for a year because I was working on in yeah. English in Bulgaria. Yeah. I was like, yeah. okay, I guess that's a smart move. And, uh, 
and just getting my foot in the door. And then I, I went to London to find a rep. And then accidentally, there was an open call for Star Wars, which is my life. Yeah. And I went to Bristol for the, one of the auditions and before I went back to Bulgaria. And I did it. Uh, they Well, first you go with the headshot and they like me and they gave me sides and they were like, come in four hours and do it. And I was like, no, I need to do it now because my plane leaves from London at 4 p.m. Um, and they're like, okay, do it. So I learned it. I walked around and then I did the scene and then I didn't hear for two months. And then after this was a Force months, Awakened? Yes. For yeah. Fun. Wow. And, and then two, year, uh, two months later, they call me uh, and they're like, we have two more scenes for you. Here's the secure servers and links and whatever. Do these scenes. I did the first scene and I uploaded it. By the time I uploaded the second scene, I got a call from Nina Gold's office saying, Nina wants to see you in person. And I suggest you fly because she doesn't see people in person very often. Oh my like, okay, God. I'll do that. And I was like, it's meant to be. And it's written in the stars. And I've always had a good feeling about me being in Star Wars. And I'm like, totally going to do it. So they, two days before the audition, they give, they give me um, three new scenes to do and scrap the old two. So I learned three new scenes. I work with an, uh, a coach and, uh, and everything. And, and so then Kate Bone actually, Kate Bone actually auditioned me um, for 40 minutes or 50 minutes. And, wow. But I, but I now in retrospect know what I, I know what, um, she was giving me a note to be more fun. Yeah. Uh, and like, find the humor, find the humor. And I couldn't at that, like at that point, I, I just done a few movies, yeah. but I didn't, I hadn't, I, I had no, no acting training almost. Yeah. So it was all learning by doing and making mistakes. And, but at that point I was like, okay, I, uh, I, I felt like I wasn't good enough yet because yeah. I couldn't take direction I was getting in my head. I was playing the idea of the scene, the way I prepared it, but I, I wasn't free enough yeah. to take that direction. And that's, that's even more important than, than coming with a strong choice, I think, is, is really being able to take that direction. And I think Maybe. when it comes to, to auditioning, and then I saw it on the screen, sure enough, and I was like, oh, that's what they meant. <laughs> what he did <laughs> Which yeah really good. totally yeah he was so cool in it and i was like okay i see why i didn't get that yeah but also i i needed to train i needed to improve i needed to, i by that point john boyega was had done three movies as a lead and like they were big like he did attack the block i don't know if you've yeah seen that. that was the big cold yeah totally yeah yeah and, uh, and so he was like working actor for years and years at that point um and maybe i was at that level when i was 27 8 nine um so I, I i needed to i think it was good in retrospect that I, I i obviously didn't get that role so i i think it taught me a lot and then my whole but it must have been so that cool that was, to go so far in that even yeah you know and then it was so yeah. depressing for so long for i'm so sure <laughs> you know it's like a huge high followed by this immense crushing blow you know yeah how yeah. did how did you buoy yourself after that i was just really tough on myself and i but i I booked 24 right around then Yeah, when I, when I didn't get that. And I was like, oh yeah, it's, it's obviously going to go. Um, uh, it's, it's going to happen. You know, I was auditioning yeah. for a lot of things and some casting directors uh, really favored me. Uh, I had a good agent at the time as well. Um, had McKeon Penford that were getting me a scene for stuff. Um, and Amy Hubbard actually was the one who, um, who really championed me and, and saw me for everything like lead roles and pilots and wow. really cool things. I, I, nothing's, uh, stuck, but, but it, it gave me that confidence. And then I got an, um, I was supposed to do, do this series in Bulgaria, uh, as one of the leads. Um, and if you, if you don't mind, just so we can paint a little bit of a landscape from when you had left to now the Bulgarian film scene, when you were there, was it, was it on the rise? Did it exist or non-existent? And by the time you had, you know, developed this, you know, resume and credentials in London, was there, you know, was there something to kind of go back to there? Yeah. Well, I think Bulgarian cinema is, I think a hundred something years old now. Yeah. Uh, movie filmmaking. So it's, uh, it was, you know, at, at the time, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 70s, we had the, the French wave. So there was, a, there was amazing movies made, but after the nineties, there was a bit of a decline for the first 10 years. And mid 2000s we started making a lot of commercial tv series and and the movie industry was always art more more art house than anything else yeah but uh things that would potentially do well at festivals and very dark and to reflect our depressing yeah. past um 
because you know only 140 years ago we were under uh, Turkish oppression, yeah. uh, Ottoman Ottoman oppression for 500 years. So we've been uh, slaves for 500 years essentially. So before that, and it was for 140 years ago, and then we had the, the Austrian and German kings that ruled here, and then we had the communists, and then for 30 years we've had d- democracy basically yeah. in the last 600 years, and. And obviously, this democracy is easily controlled in a poor country. So yeah. it, there's so many problems that I can't even begin to start explaining to you. But also, it's one of the you know nicest, safest places in the world you can live. There's yeah. much less petty crime than in the UK or the US. And um, uh, there's only organized corruption, pretty much. But yeah. it's pretty normal to live. Uh, you know what I mean? And it's beautiful. And you have so many mountains. And, and you have the sea, the Black Sea. And it's just a lovely place to live. So... But then my ambitions were never to be in that kind of movie industry over here. I always liked fantasy and sci-fi. So I'm a huge Matrix and Lord of the Rings fan and Star Wars. So if for me, and that's why I'm so happy doing Shadow and Bone, because I'm such a fan of that genre that wasn't made in my country. So at that point, I... Uh, there, there's a studio here as well, a couple of studios, New Bojana Film Studios, that a lot of the big action movies, uh, American action movies are shot there. Like the Yeah, they ton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a friend who did a project there, um, Rob yeah, Cohen. They're shooting like, yeah, three, yeah. They're shooting three movies. Oh, yeah. He did um, that great movie uh, last year. Um, yeah. Yeah. The one with uh, Toby. Uh, with Orlando Bloom and, and, and Scott, I, Scott uh, Eastwood. Was that, I think, was that uh, him? No, it was a, di- a different one uh, about Hurricane Heist. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I'm confusing the directors, but but yeah, they did uh, Outpost. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, with Scotty Stewart and Orlando Bloom last year or two years ago, but um, yeah, they're shooting like three movies right now at the studio. Wow, that's like incredible. Big American movies, and um, so and that's kind of my my foot in the in the door, I guess. I'm sorry, give me one sec. Um, so at that point, uh, I I had done two episodes of 24. I was being seen for a lot of things. I was very hyped. Um, you know, I was like, it's going to stick soon. Yeah. And I got offered to do this lead role on a Bulgarian series that was going to be really good. It was a very good screenwriter and production director, uh, about really, it's called liaisons or relationships or something. Yeah. And so, um, I, I got offered that all of a sudden and I was like, uh, what do I do? And then my agent at the time was like, well, do you want an, do you want an international career or do you want a local career? I was like, I want an international career. And they were like, well, then you stay here and you keep auditioning. And I was like, okay. And so I turned the job down. I stayed wow. in London and didn't book for seven months. <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh yeah. man. Was that tough? You know, knowing you made the right decision or seeing, I seeing it. it so I at the time, it. you know, <laughs> I never regretted it for a second. I, I was angry that I wasn't booking, but I, I never regretted the decision. And then and then I did this uh, movie that only came out last year called Search and Destroy. Yeah. Or Seek and Destroy with Bruce Dillon from Orphan Black. And uh, it was like, we did it for fifty or $60,000 or something, the entire budget. What? And they, they recycled material from old Millennium Films movies and... Uh, and we, we got to be Nate and we shot it in nine days <laughs> or 12 days. Oh my God. Gorilla filmmaking. And, yeah. And then, but at the studio using all everything for free because yeah. the, the Danny Lerner, uh, was directing it and, um, he, he was just recovering from, um, cancer and he, he, he we thought at the time that he fought it off and, and this was kind of a gift to him from his, from his brother, uh, from the studio to direct this movie just to get his mind off things and the guy directed the movie and it was amazing to work with him and then he sent me an email in january we shot it in october and in january he emailed me and said oh you've done great i've seen the first cut i'm so proud and like i'm looking forward thank you for for working on this basically yeah. almost for free and we really appreciate it and then 12, 20 days later i saw on deadline that he passed away oh man it was horrific i was like wow wow um, so sorry for your loss, man. That's so tough. Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I, I you know, I, it's, it's, yeah, sorry for, for everybody who, you know, knew him for a, a long time. And I, I, and just knowing him for a few days, yeah. uh, working with him for a few weeks was just, um, it was really cool. But yeah, sadly, 
sadly he passed away. Um, and then they, that, that project was on the shelf for a long time. And recently somebody had the crazy idea to make it into a, to turn it with the, like right bad, like write cheesy music for it and make yeah. it into a bad B movie from the nineties, <laughs> which was always kind of the intention of it. Cause it doesn't yeah. take itself too seriously. It's just, um, a lot of stuff blown up and it was fun doing life. it, you know, it's but crazy. It's, oh, it was crazy fun doing it. It's probably yeah. one of my, uh, cause I, I helped uh, some mates of mine got cast as well. Cause I recommended them. Oh, um, that's awesome. I was from Australia. My, one of my best friends, Tim Fellingham, was an amazing actor. So it was like, I was with mates and just having fun. Oh, John Bruce was the dream. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. So it was really fun. Um, uh, and, and then I came back and then I booked Ben-Hur, London Has Fallen, Leatherface, Barbarians Rising in a span of four or five months. And I shot wow. all these projects. I had some, you know, decent lines and roles, um, uh, you know, compared to how big these, some of these budgets were. Um, and, and then I went back to, to the studio, did that scene that I told you about, and then I booked another mother's son. And at that point, I had to turn down a Ben Kingsley and uh, Antonio Banderas movie that I was going to have like a pretty big part. Wow. Um, I think the movie was called Security. Um, and was I had that to turn a difficult down another decision? Son. Or you were already committed to another mother's son? Oh, actually, I'm missing one beat. Two months right after I did Barbarians Rising, I got offered the lead role on the biggest Bulgarian TV series that's sold across the world as well. It's called Undercover. It's about police. It's a police action drama. Yeah. Thriller. And I was, it was the last season and they wanted to change the lead character, uh, the lead actor, because he was also on another show and they didn't want to compete. Um, no, he, they, the, the, there was a scheduling conflict. So Got it. they were like, ah, we don't want to deal with another production. And yeah. his availability. I was just going to cut him. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what? It's like the bold and the beautiful when you change the actor mid season and or, like, or dark night, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. 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 I mean, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense but but then this one was i, I was like ah tempting but I, I i kind of i had and i had to decide the same day and fly the next day yeah. and shoot the, the day after and what helped you navigate the guys that also well the guy was also a friend of mine so i was like i called a friend i was like does he know this is going to happen to him and he's like no no he's living his life we, we had a party he's with his girlfriend in the next room and oh my no god it's like finding um, out your friend's girlfriend's going to break up with him. And you know, and you're like, oh, yeah. God. Because he was partying so hard because the next day he was going to start. Yeah, he thought you. he was going to make yeah. tons of money. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. damn. This fucking I don't business. I want to be that guy. Yeah. I want to be that guy. Um, yeah. And they also like, they didn't offer too much money because they knew how big I was going to get from yeah, doing this. Yeah, the exposure was going to be. Yeah. And yeah. then I was like, okay, what about residuals? And they were like, well, that's really just for us. Cause there's, don't, don't get, you're going to get me started about the, that thing. Yeah. Here. But, um, and, and so I think for reruns, act, lead actors and on a show like that for reruns, they would, they would get like 50 bucks. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we need a sag here. Yeah. Uh, seriously. Let's yeah. get start a mob, dude. <laughs> yeah. And um, essentially, there were so many things. I spoke to a few people. I asked what they thought. I did a pros and cons list. And I then I then I did whatever I was going to do anyway. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, that's, yeah. that's my process. I People tell me, no, go do it. Yeah. I read the pros and cons. And then I see I should be doing it. But I was like, no, it doesn't feel right. I always yeah. listen to my voice. You know what I mean? And you have like, to. I think, I think you have to. It's the artist's voice, man. It's it's the truth. It's the and only. I knew it was gonna get so easy for me here in Bulgaria, yeah. and it was get it was gonna get so hard for me to turn down jobs here. Yeah, and you get, get comfortable. I would get comfortable, and yeah. I, I didn't want to get comfortable. And I was like, no, I'm staying here. Sorry. So I turned him down, and then then I did um, another mother's son about, uh, and then I had to turn down the other movie as well. And I was yeah. Like, ah. Ah, yeah. now it's a different thing because it is an international project that's going to be seen in the, in the cinemas by a lot yeah. of people. I was but, like, no, like, but it's an action thing. So I was like, nah, you know what I mean? No. Yeah. I, I and it, it's that. another mother son, you, you, you know, those opportunities come once every five decades, you know? Yeah. To yeah. 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 For sure. And, and I, I didn't regret it. And I, I got another, I, and at that point I wasn't even sure I had an, I had booked the role. I turned oh. it. I turned all these things down without knowing that I have a next job. I was no, auditioning for it. I wow. was in the mix, but I had no clue. 
and it took three, four, five weeks before they approved me. Only two weeks before I, we started, to, we were going to start a shoot. Um, and I was like, doomed. I'm like 80 kilos. I, I don't look like a prisoner of war. I need yeah. to go on a diet. And, and so I did. Uh, obviously, the first two days I self sabotaged and I ate a lot of pizza and, and crisps and chips and all of that stuff at 2 a.m. But then yeah. <laughs> after that, I just went on a strict diet and I lost like, Christian Bale style. Yeah, 10 kilos. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I've never understood that until that point when I was like, oh no, if I'm playing this character, because I think of myself as a character actor. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. I was like, I need to do, I need to make a transformation and I yeah. need to not be me. Uh, physically at least. And, um, and so I lost 10 kilos in like two or three weeks. And then I maintained that for the whole month that we shot it um, to the point where I was, I was losing the most, I wanted to lose the most weight and water yeah. from my body just before the scene where I'm in the bathtub and you can see me uh, topless. Yes. Yeah. Look um, beautiful topless. If I do say so. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Best topless Swimming. scene ever. <laughs> yeah. And um and so I, I almost fainted the day before because I was so undernourished. <laughs> wow. Do you <laughs> remember your diet? Saying, this... what, were you doing oh, like yeah. an apple day? Like what were you An eating? apple in the morning with a lot of coffees. And then I did a, a salad in, in, uh, for, for lunch and, a, uh, and then a soup for dinner wow. with a glass of wine just to just relax. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some salmon every other day man but it was brutal but it was okay and but i i i learned a lot from being hungry yeah um and starving a lot of the time because i would i'm such a pacifist in in real life and i always de-escalate situations if if something's going down i think uh, i keep my cool and uh and i i you know i I had a moment where I was so hungry that somebody bumped into me on the Metro. Like yeah. it, it, that happens a hundred times. In yeah, right? of course. But that time somebody bumped me and I was like, <clears throat> I immediately just wanted to murder them. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, what's going on? This is not me. And I sit down and I open the newspaper and it says little boy, something happens to a little boy or uh, that was died or something. And I, I just read the title of the article and I started sobbing uncontrollably. Yeah. And then I listened to Luke, uh, Lucas Graham's seven day song, uh, seven years song. Yeah. Uh, and he talks about life in it. And I started to listen to the lyrics and I was like, this is so sad. Oh, I'm man. Die. I'm and so I was sore. like, it was literally very, um, very intense. Uh, and I was like, okay, so I can't really judge people who would sell out their, their neighbors for an extra ration to feed their kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we always say it's in war. I realize it's all gray. There's no uh, black or white. It's, no, it's, it's, it's existence. It We're all fighting for, to maintain there our was, lives. There was some amazing, um, you know, Germans who were SAS, not by choice. And they were helping Jewish people in the camps and, and I, I listened to the, I, I read this book called uh, by Eckhart, uh, sorry, uh, by uh, Viktor Frankl mm. called, um, oh, let me see what it's called. Sorry, I haven't. Viktor Frankl. Was it the meaning of life? Oh, man, man's search for meaning. Okay. So Victor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, was came. I read it at the time, and it's from the death camp to existentialism. Uh, existentialism, and you know he's telling stories about how it's it's not the bad guys and the good guys. There's yeah. there's people, uh, you know, and and it's it's not as easy as pointing fingers. Yeah. Um, and so I I really, you know, I really related to 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 how few people must have felt at that time. Yeah, uh, as I was exhausted after that movie, but it was so liberating to do that part. And working with Jenny Seagrove was amazing, and and all the John Hanna and Ronan Keating and Amanda Abington, just so many uh, British Some of the superstars. finest, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That was a that was a tough one. And it was a hard really, letting go of that character, you know, living in that space and. And Not really. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a my my whole <clears throat> approach to things. Um, 
I, I think I'm, I'm very healthy and letting go of, yeah. of things like during it, of course, I'll be tired and I'll feel the, the toll it's taking emotionally on my, on my strength and my energy. Um, but I tend not to, to bring it home. Uh, and that's just my, that's the studio that I went to kind of teaches that anti-intellectual don't use emotional memory kind of thing. And just, I went to Strasbourg. You know, we use emotional memory. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you're fucked. For like yeah. Oh, I'm fucked 24 seven, dude. Yeah. Even on my good days, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I think I, I, my, my personal method that I've kind of, kind of assembled, I've, I've studied all of it uh, or not all of it, but a lot of different things. And I've yeah. picked what works for me. I think that's really important for actors to kind of understand is there, there's a lot from one method you could use, but it's not the be all and end all. You have to. It's not paint have, by numbers. Yeah. And there's yeah. no real authority. Like you're the only authority about how you should be working yeah. and what things work for you. And I think you, it's about finding a teacher that's going to bring out um, what works for you and what really blocks you because it's about not only what me methods and what tools you have in your toolbox, but also like, do you have some stuff that's unresolved in your life? And that's yeah. what I meant by where does the work match your life right now? Yeah. Where are you in the work and where are you in life? And, and is it, uh, do you need to work on life stuff a little bit to catch up with your work or the yeah. other way around? Are you ready now to do all these crazy, scary scenes or do you really actually have to face your past first and talk about it and resolve it either in your head uh, or with other people that maybe you didn't, you know, you're, it's, it's, it's almost always your parents, yeah. your uh, lover, uh, your siblings, um, or your boss or your work. Maybe you're stuck because you're doing something you don't love. Um, and you just have to um, kind of deal with the, and that, that's what's great about AMAW is that where we, we work on scenes that, um, you know, if the teacher spots that you have a problem with uh, male authority, let's say, yeah, he'll give you those kinds of scenes to do, yeah, and and figure it out in the studio as to why that is exposure like, therapy, so to speak, and yeah, yeah, and yeah, really, uh, it really works because the way we kind of talk about it is that there's, you know, we have all of humanity within us, and we have pockets of things that. Uh, we need to tap into to play those certain characters rather than finding the character somewhere outside of me. I try to look for this one thing that is very similar or the same. Yeah. Um, or how would I be in the, in that circumstance? And, and it really, and that's when I think you get something because sometimes you can get a little too much into the text and what they, what you think they want to see, yeah. whether it's an audition or actually doing a movie or a play. And I like to keep it, very um kind of loose and f try 10 different things on set and um and and dare to fail um and dare to be shit dare not to be liked um i and i always um i always try to do something very out there and and sometimes it's scary because you don't want to make a fool of yourself in front of rob Lowe or someone yeah. like that and uh, or like steal their moment because yeah. i thought maybe uh, an improvisation that doesn't this isn't necessarily going to stay in it uh but i i want to try it because yeah could, you know what i mean and some of those moments sometimes stick like with uh shadow and bone we had a um we had to do a lot of improvisation with simon sears who's an amazing danish actor um and i guess i could say it now that uh, in the books we're not a couple but in the series we are i don't know yeah. if you got that you went uh, you watched episode five but i don't know if you got into the yeah it's that scene in the in the palace where the whole kind of cast is together yeah and i feed him a, this little uh, muffin or something this little cake yeah and, and that was just a moment they were like we're just going to come through here and see you and i was like okay we need to do, do, do something do something so, yeah yeah and i was like how about i feed you and he's like okay but i wouldn't want that i was like exactly <laughs> 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 your character wouldn't but mine yeah. would so let's figure out a way and we kind of Work, workshopped it on on the spot a yeah. few times as they were like rehearsing and then we came up with this thing choreographically as well because it's a steady cam shot one shot that shows a bunch of characters and then it goes into this conversation between the ambassadors uh but then on twitter this is one of the most favorite scenes uh, on uh, people's favorite scenes in the show that that's so moment. awesome man <laughs> i love that and those are the best ones because those are always the moments people love the ones that are just like uh, the diy <laughs> 
And yeah. I'm, I'm curious, did another mother's son, did that get you, Julian, to the place that you wanted to be, like in this international market, you had proven yourself in these more, you know, budgetary, high budget action focus, and then you had a character specific, you know, emotional driven did that get you to the place that you wanted to be for something like shadow and a bone to occur? Or were you still, was it still a, a relentless grind? Dude, after that, and, and you know, the, the, everybody was so happy with the movie, the producers and, uh, and the producer told me like next year, this time next year, you'll be nominated for a BAFTA for this performance. Yeah. And then I wasn't. <laughs> and oh. then I also didn't work for two years after. No that. way. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my second big spell, yeah. uh, dry spell. And, and I was like, what's going on? But then I figured it out later on that I was, I just moved to a different bracket, as you say, yeah. you know, I've proven myself on this level, but now I was competing for lead roles with people who had several, another yeah. person, you know what I mean? Uh, they, they, and I was, I was, I was, again, I had to, to grind to get to that next bracket. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure I'm in that zone, right? In that place it's right now. It's the never ending career. moving goalposts yeah. for an actor, you know? Yeah. Totally. Until, yeah. And, and, until you get to Brad Pitt level and then you have to maintain that, which is the hardest thing in the world. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think it never gets, it gets easier, but also the expectations get high, uh, are higher. I, I think Ben Barnes, you know, from Shadow and a Bone put it a great mm -hmm. way. He's like in this business, you know, you think there's an elevator, an escalator or staircase mm -hmm. to Leo and Brad and, and there isn't, you know, in, the, in this <laughs> business, it's it's an ocean and we're all just catching waves and there's no yeah. escalator. You know what I mean? And catching it, waves is exactly it. Yeah. yeah and, and, and those guys came up at a time where the rules and the systems that were in place don't exist anymore, you know, and and yeah. who knows if they ever will again. And we're just we're just we're out here paddling along until we can catch a wave, dude. I think it's, 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 you know, it's exciting now because it's so international and globalized and the market is as well. And also the opportunities are too. And there's so many local, um, there's so much content created locally in different States in America, yeah. if you wish, like because of tax credit also around Eastern Europe, there's so much tax credit, um, you know, and they um, do geopolitical, like Netflix does content there. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. Yeah, they're starting to. I think Eastern Europe is the next market on there because I think they figured out it's 300 million people. So that's yeah. <laughs> that's what they need to do to compete with Disney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with Disney's Disney's expanding here also very uh, aggressively because oh, wow. they bought Fox and Fox Studios uh, for the Southeastern Europe was in Bulgaria. Got so it. they bought and now they're establishing Disney uh, with localized content probably. Oh, HBO's I didn't know that. that as well. Hopefully Netflix will be doing that soon. Uh, Amazon um, as well. So. I think, uh, you know, with Maria Bakalova being on the biggest movie on Amazon last year, Borat, subsequent movie film like that, yeah. it's huge. And, and being sort of in those conversations as well, I kind of, I kind of- Is there of a lot of Bulgarian know, pride in that, you know? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. They gave her um, an Oscar, which is uh, like the Oscars for theater, uh, like Tony's, I guess, wow. in Bulgaria. And they gave her a, t a Tony for- and a scare for uh, international rising star and yeah. ambassador of Bulgarian acting. Wow. Well, period. you're getting it this year, dude. You know, I'm fucking <laughs> calling them right now. <laughs> as soon as this is over, that's what I'm doing. Thanks for that. I'm Thanks. making some yeah. emails, bro. But that was the reason why I, I help other Bulgarian actors and I set up my own uh, management acting agency to help Bulgarian actors be bridged with that uh, entertainment industry in the, in the West because yeah. we don't have any agencies in Bulgaria. You we don't. barely have any casting directors. Wow. Uh, it's mostly like people just knowing people from either theater or drama school, and then they choose them for their movies or for their series. And I'm kind of, I was like, I'm, I'm pissed off at that. First of all, I'm going to establish a, an infrastructure for getting Bulgarian talent seen in the yeah. UK and the US. And secondly, I want to kind of 10 years from now, kind of have my own academy in Bulgaria. I want to have yeah. um, develop the agency management um, thing, which... Maria Bacalo was the first person to come out of that system. And you knew her from studio or? No, I, I, um, I organized the audition for Borat basically in Bulgaria. Nancy Bishop reached out because we worked together um, wow. for several years. I was organizing workshops for her in 2014, 15. I, I specifically targeted her because of my own niche was American and Eastern European. And she cast a lot of those projects. Yeah. So I was like, let's work together. And, you know, we've had a, uh, we're friends and we've had an awesome work relationship and she's seen me for things and, uh, whenever I'm right. So 
Um, and that's all we can ask for is to be seen. And yeah. it's so rare that you would be seen for something that's not a, for a girl, especially that's not a prostitute yeah. for me or <laughs> with yeah. 10 lines. And, uh, or even if it's the lead, it's still going to be that prostitute. Like it's yeah. not a kid. You know what I mean? Or the, 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 the in, intelligent, that, you know, girl yeah. with the gun that's cool yeah. and badass and funny. Yeah, not even the IT guy, because yeah. you know, Bulgarians, I think, came up with the Trojan horse. Uh, oh, virus. really? So <laughs> very into <laughs> IT. Like, yeah. I think Bulgaria actually was the second biggest uh, computer manufacturer in the 80s after Microsoft. I did not know that. Wow. Yeah, it was called Pravets. And we're we going to put that on Wikipedia all... for Bulgaria yeah. right after yeah. this. <laughs> well, the, the, the guy who came up with the computer, John Atanasov, is an American Bulgarian. Oh, wow. Look at that. Thank you for all yeah. your, your contributions to the this world. Is, and this this is conversation a... would not be possible without your country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so uh, I don't even know what we're talking about. Me either, <laughs> dude, but that's it. <laughs> that's great. So um, you're making these opportunities for these Bulgarian actors. And do you think now that... Yeah, and so I, I did basically, I found Maria um, and she even thought we were traffickers because it was so NDA and nobody knew what the fuck. So she has this famous story where she tells that, um, yeah, we. Uh, uh, I thought I was going to get trafficked because things like these don't happen to people like us. Like you yeah. never get seen for lead roles in Hollywood movies. So it sounded like a scam. I, and and I, and I started crying when she told me that. I was like, that's why I want to help you. Yeah. That's why I want to help people. Because, you know, we carry a lot of interesting things, ethnically, culturally, and that are very interesting, I think will be very interesting for people to see on screen. And it's a shame that we're not as included. Um, it's to, a fucking damn shame. Table. But I think what happened with her and with my career being, you know, going the steady, normal yeah. route of a career... Right. And her career just kind of went is one of those fairy tale moments where yeah. she's trained for 12 years. She's 24. She's been training. She's acting since 12. Yeah. And she's done five feature films over here as lead roles. So she was one of the best Bulgarian actresses anyway. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I find her at the right time. Yeah. And she seizes that moment all the way. Um, and, you know, I've been managing and mentoring her career since and uh, set her up with an agent in the UK with my agent, Tom Jago at Insight. And then he Just set her up Oscars with CAA. Or a few and, other nights. Yeah. She was incredible. And, you know. Yeah, dude. And, and you know, we set her up with a PR and everything. So, and been nurturing this because it's, I almost feel that it's one of the most important things I've done in my life that, um, that we have now. A, a true champion for our representation on screen and and she's doing so well so i i uh, well you're the champion she's the and... she's the disciple you know it couldn't <laughs> happen without you <laughs> i'm the master yeah. she's the champion i'm the yeah. master yeah i'd exactly. say that way. <laughs> yeah you're you're um, you're uh you're obi the sensei <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm obi -Wan. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta make sure she doesn't go to Darth Vader. make her yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no, she's good she's good <laughs> yeah um i love the uh the analogy but um uh, yeah so um, I, that's why we know with, and then it, there's been, there's been a few self-fulfilling prophecies in my career that I've kind of like had an, I, I, I was like, Ooh, I felt it in my body that, Oh, this is going to work out. This one's going to work out. Yeah. And then it leads to another one. And then that, so I did Berlin. Yeah. It's a Berlin long story, but, but it, yeah, but it's, um, what I wanted to say was that, um, yeah, it comes and goes in cycles. I feel. And, and you shouldn't, and I think with, with, with auditioning, one of the best advices I can give is just do an audition to do a job, not to get a job. And, and just, it's, it's a performance and we're performers, right? We do this because we want to act. We don't, yeah. there's no other, and whether you're doing it at a small theater or a movie or a TV series or an audition, there's really no difference. You shouldn't approach it any different way. You read about it, you do your job, you, you know, you do the work beforehand, you do your prep, then you let go of a prep and just have fun. You have 15 minutes to act in front of two or three people. Um, and then your job is done. Yeah. Like stop hanging on to the result. And that when I changed kind of my mindset about auditioning, with that in mind, I was like, I started booking a lot. I 
Do you think Star yeah. Wars was that experience for you because you were so caught up in the result of like, if I book this, my life will be, you know, and then that not happening allowed you to finally be, okay, it's the audition that matters, not the result. Yeah. Again, I think knowledge comes and, and wisdom comes in cycles as well. You yeah. understand some truth at one level and yeah. then you think, oh, I got it now. And then two years later, you see yourself all it's still hanging on to result. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I understood it again, just at a deeper level now. And, and it just keeps the understanding keeps getting deeper, I think, and more grounded. And that gives you that ability to, to have that confidence. Because I think it's being relaxed and confident is very important. Yeah. Um, but I always, I'm always scared shitless every other job I do. And with Shadow and Bone, was that a real, you know, was that, I mean, it's such a global project of, of Netflix and, and yeah. you know, like, was that, was that an exciting, a terrifying, you know, I mean, it's kind of a Game of Thrones sci-fi. Yeah. I think for me, the scale never scares me. It's the fact that um, it's the imposter syndrome that we all have and we all go through. And I keep yeah. reminding myself that. And it's the only way to get out of it is just to remind yourself that everybody and you have gone through that a million times. And yeah. Meryl Streep talks about it and um, uh, Einstein's spoken about it, that he always doubted himself, that he's an idiot. So if Meryl Streep doubts that she's talented, then it's okay for me to doubt that I'm talented too. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it's always just the first day of shooting um, where you kind of, I feel like I have to prove myself to, to my establish colleagues. a cadence and yeah. yeah. And, and after the first take and then I'm uh, first few takes and then I'm like relaxed and I'm good to go and, and, and take those big chances. But I always, it, it's just that, and I always, I did this, um, I did Temple with Mark Strong the, last year, which is yeah. going to come out next, uh, the, this, this autumn on Sky and HBO in, the, in, the, in Bulgaria, uh, in Europe. But I always have this thing where I, I have a bit of a self-sabotage uh, week where I'm like, oh, I have three weeks to study this, to study so many lines. I have time, I have time. And then it's five days before the yeah. day. I'm like, ah, I don't know the lines. Yeah, I'm the and, same way. And I just, and I'm always, I'm, there's never been, my biggest fear, I think probably is not so much the talent thing anymore. It's about being underprepared and not knowing my lines. I think yeah. for the last three or four years, that's been my fear is yeah. forgetting my line. Uh, and it's never happened to me. I think it's a trauma I had actually in the third movie I did for, for the sci-fi channel. I totally f couldn't, mum I, I was mumbling my lines. And so I had this very bad experience where I considered that's the only time I considered quitting acting. Wow. I was so embarrassed. And since then, I've just been super overprepared. <laughs> yeah. But I still wait for the last moment. I, you know, but it's, it's, that's so typical for actors. I think the self sabotage moment. I don't know if that's, you can relate to that. I but. totally can relate to that, man. It's a, <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you have a career you can bring it to. I can't, I don't have it yet. I got a podcast, you know, but, uh, <laughs> no, but man, that's it's, a, it's, it's, it's doing all those, you know, and every role, counts and gets you on that next level and it, yeah even just for you it gives you that you know i've done i've done four things well now i've done six things yeah now i've done seven things and so you can't be too hard on yourself um because at the end of the day it's you versus you if if you can and there was this other school of thought that said a lot of people say do work something in the creative industry other people say work something that's totally not creative and I think there's, there is an element of don't stress your creativity to be making you money. Don't put that stress on you being creative because then you have to be perfect instead yeah. of being creative and being perfect. Isn't going to lead you anywhere because it's no such thing as perfect. It doesn't yeah. exist. It's an idea and ideas live in our heads. Yeah. Um, it's the same when you see uh, uh, your performance in my case, when I see my, I used to cringe watching myself. Now I'm so in love with myself. <laughs> and every it's funny other time I watch it, I yeah. love it. I love it even more and more. Yeah. But I, it's always the first time I watch it. I'm like, ah, I had better takes of this reaction. Yeah. And I did that and I did, oh, they cut this line. Um, and, and I'm a little, eh. but then I talked to my agents, obviously who knew not how I did it. Yeah. The they just saw the end result. And they were like, dude, it was so amazing. Trust me. Nobody. Yeah. Saw, you were great, man. That this line a little bit slower than you thought you should. And that's again, my, ex my ideas, my expectation, but also like, you have to understand sometimes you, you get cut out of scenes Yeah, and it sucks. And it's got Especially nothing to do with you. A fucking cathartic scene. 
Yeah. And you're like, I'm winning an Oscar for this. <laughs> the single and tears then, get it. Yeah. Yeah. Those t- and then that part of the scene gets cut for one reason or another. And you have to, because I, I produced a film called The Dare uh, for a million dollars budget uh, four years ago, three years ago now uh, with Millennium Films. And it got distributed, uh, distributed worldwide. Uh, I think it made three million in the box office in the Netherlands. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> So it's a successful project that we made for under a million with first time director, first time producer, first time AD, first time, uh, uh, um, 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 everybody was first time, man. It's yeah. crazy, but we did it and it, it was pretty good. Yeah. And so I understand, uh, filmmaking as well. Um, and I know why sometimes my scene gets cut from an objective point of view. Yeah. I'm like, it sucks. But I totally get it. Yeah. It doesn't move the story along. It's I might personal. be the guest star of the episode or whatever, yeah. but it's always about the leads and the, especially the one lead character whose journey we see through through his, we see the whole journey through his eyes yeah. or her eyes. So for me to, um, I have to understand that it's, it's, it's me happening to them most of the time at this stage of my career. Yeah. So everything that, um, that sometimes, uh, you just have to know where you, and, and that's a big for movie acting, I guess as well, that you kind of have to know how they're going to edit it ahead of time. And that's yeah. like people that you mentioned, Ben Barnes, he's so good at that stuff that he was like, we're doing a scene together. And he's like, if you make that dramatic pause that you were doing there uh, for that uh, last uh, line at the end, yeah, they're going to cut your last bit, your last line into the next scene. And it's going to be voiceover. So wow. he's like, as much as it's cooler for you to make the pause, yeah. say it in one line. Yeah, yeah. And they won't cut you. They can't. They can't yeah. edit around that. So he know, like, when you get experience like that, um, and and uh, and one of the takes, I said it slowly, and then they cut it. So. <laughs> no, <laughs> he was right. <laughs> yeah, he was right. He's yeah. totally right. Yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? Like it's, it's stuff like that or like entire scenes getting cut because you've already established what's going on and you don't need that other scene of me being sad because I was already sad in the previous scene and we established we're somewhere. So it doesn't, and you have to make it 50 minutes. Yeah. If you had to cut a scene, it would be a scene that doesn't, uh, doesn't move the story along as fast enough. So there's all these things always that, that, um, and you kind of have to always do, you know, the lead gets 10 takes and you get two or three. Yeah. Um, the politics. And it's totally, but it's totally understandable. Yeah. Like, dude, if I only have three, four or five days to shoot uh, with the, with Rob Lowe, for example, on this thing. And even though I have the more dramatic stuff and, uh, uh, and he's just, he's the detective. He has a shit ton of lines to learn and a shit ton of scenes to do. Yeah. And he's the person that, is selling the show. He's the reason the show exists. Yeah, it's a business. Of course, of, and of course, you're going to give him more time to to figure it out because one, it's the business, but also it's his story. And he has to learn a lot more lines than I do and, and be on it for six months. And I have to just be on it for like four days. Yeah. So I should be in, a, it should take, like I should be able to do it in one or two takes. Yeah, And kind of, I think that makes you a stronger actor when you're, when you're or, or doing indie films, it's the same. You, nobody has more than two or three takes. So um, it makes you a better actor because you, um, yeah, you just, you just are always ready to bring it. And you're, I think my, my attention is, uh, is so laser sharp when I'm on set that, it, and, and, and I'm one of those annoying actors who can talk to you about something else and then go do a dramatic scenes five, five, five seconds later. Yeah. And I, I'll be laughing with you and then I'll do the scene and I'll come back laughing about yeah, what we were laughing yeah. about, which I, which I really, you know, enjoy. Cause then I, I, you know, I relax and yeah. you get that, especially with horror films and drama films, because you need to release, at least that's how I work. Yeah. And, and yeah, so uh, I think it makes you a stronger actor uh, being put in those situations where, where you, where you really have to turn it on um, sometimes in very extreme situations. And uh, yeah, and I actually got a really cool compliment from Mark Strong on, on Temple because the first scene we did together, um, they were like, okay, can you drive um, 
uh, what is it called? Shift stick, stick shift. Yeah. What, what stick shift. Yeah. Yeah. Stick shift. Manual yeah. Can you, stick can, shift. Yeah. Can you, can you drive manual? And I'm like, yeah, but what if I couldn't? <laughs> but, but, so, so, um, um, we're in this car park and, and it was this BMW old one. And I, it was, and, and it's on the other side of the road. You know what I mean? As oh well. yeah. It's, it's flipped. It's, yeah. I, I haven't really driven, a, a, a sitting on the right and my, my, my left hand has to, to move the shift stick. And, but you know, obviously, okay, cool. Let's do it. Yeah. I go there, turn on the lights when you're on, when, when you're slow, like turn on the lights later and then stop right here on this line. Yeah. Exactly. When Mark's going to show up and then come out and have this extremely emotional exchange with him. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, okay, cool, cool. Da, da, da. I do it. Um, and uh, he's like, wow. Well, so Julian, you're a very accomplished actor, it seems. I'm like, I'm, I was like, dude, you know my stuff. He's like, no, 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 not in that sense. But no, no. <laughs> no, no, we did. It was very organic. He's like, oh, you're. I was like, oh, he's like, yeah, like to to be able to. They threw seven things at you. Yeah, and you did all eight. Still, yeah, and you're still, yeah, and you're yeah. still able to do the scene despite those distractions and. He was like, for me, I think that's very difficult. And that's an accomplished actor, like a full rounded actor. What a beautiful compliment. And so I was like, dude, and he's so great. Like, like I go to set, I go to makeup and he comes in and he goes, hi, Julian. We were so lucky to have you. And I'm like, dude, what a welcome, man. And from then on, we're best pals. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's the leader you want on set. That's yeah. the, and he knew everybody's names and um oh what a gentleman man like the whole crew and he's producing the show as well so um but but he really makes that effort to connect personally and know a bit a little bit about everybody yeah um so i think and that's the point i, I guess of for me acting the most the most beautiful thing about this profession and having an international career is you travel to so many different places and you meet so many different people uh, from the cast to the creators to the crew who and and normally the crew are your the people you vibe with the most because you're with them every time you yeah. go on set, whereas you might be with different characters or et cetera, et cetera. So the crew is, uh, uh, is a lot of people from the crew you really get close to a lot of the time. And normally if you're shooting in Budapest, they're going to be Hungarian people. If you're yeah. shooting in Italy, they're going to be Italians in Spain. So um, you really get to broaden your horizon, learn some languages along the way as well. And, and, and become a citizen of the world, understand different cultures. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, London did that for me, and um, I became very. I'm very grateful to. Was London. it the pandemic that brought you back home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was actually going to move back to LA because I've been unsuccessfully trying to move there. Oh, every you have. Oh. To, yeah, every time I move to LA and I settle and I get an apartment, I book something in the UK. No so way. So I come back and shoot in the UK for two months, and I come. come and you're back paying rent LA. on an empty apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That wow. happened a few times. Um, and so I was, I was going to go back again. Um, and then the pandemic happened and I was actually going to go back again for the Oscars, but I got COVID. Oh no. <laughs> I was, I was supposed to go. And then I got COVID. I was like, Oh God. Oh dude. I'm so sorry. Well, yeah. I mean, it was, it, was it okay. wasn't normal ones anyway. So, you know, yeah. Well, yeah. Either way it's her moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all about her. So whether I go or not, it doesn't make any difference, you know? And, uh, and, I'm, I'm, and I've never been, you know, that person that wants to always schmooze. And yeah, I, I almost felt embarrassed in my own premiere on Leicester Square for another mother's son. I was like, oh, this, this attention's too much. Imposter <laughs> syndrome, dude. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Again, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was so funny. Me and my friend were discussing this. We, uh, we went to this charity ball and we were too embarrassed to go take official photos at the, you know, the banners that they yeah. put up and they have a photographer. And we were like, oh, no, we don't want to. We were too shy. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't come here to, to be noticed. Or <laughs> so dumb. Yeah. We're so shit at selling ourselves as much as I'm, you know, in the business of selling others. But <laughs> yeah, I, um, but yeah, I was going to come for the Oscars, but I got COVID and, and yeah, so I didn't, but it's, it's, it, as I said, it's, it's, uh, it, it's not about that stuff uh, yeah. at the end of the day for me. No. It's, it's, um, it's about the work. I, I I did the work as well, and 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 I did the work of, of helping Maria with all I could and all I knew. So, 
Um, and there's so much was love between us and with so much. Sasha yeah. inadvertently, did you get to know him at all? Or? I, I've been on a few Zooms with him, um, but that's it. Yeah. Because we were casting uh, the prime minister. So I helped ah. find the prime minister as well. Wow. So I was coordinating that. Um, but eventually they got an actor, a brilliant actor from Romania. Wow. To do it. Um, but it's, dude, it's, um, we're talking about the, the Oscars. Oh shit. I keep forgetting what we're talking about. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're having a great time, man. I, we're talking yeah. about shadow and bone imposter syndrome. Oh, moving to LA, moving to LA. Moving to LA. Yeah. I keep yeah, moving yeah. to LA and coming back. And I was now going to go to LA. Yeah. For the Oscars. But, um, I think, uh, yeah, I've, I've moved back here because of the pandemic and we have an apartment in Sofia, my parents. So I'm staying here nice. and, um, you know, it's, it's been good. And nowadays everything is self-tape. So it doesn't really matter where I live. Yeah. It really, actually, I mean, everywhere. Yeah. I've really enjoyed actually living here and being with my family after 10 years of not really yeah. going home that much. Cause I'm hustling, I'm doing, working on my career. Um, but now I kind of have, can afford this luxury of, of staying put for a second and yeah. kind of, I'm 31 now, 32 soon. So I'm like, okay, I'm a, uh, I'm maturing. Yeah. Probably what, what's called a man. Yeah. <laughs> At some point I'll be a man soon. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay. I have to, I have to kind of, you know, see where I want to live because I don't know if I want to live in London anymore. I think yeah. I want to live in Madrid. I want, I want sun. I want good food. Oh, so you don't even want to LA anymore. Um, it's too far. Yeah, it is pretty far for you. Come to New York, dude. That's where I am. Yeah, New York. Yeah. I've always wanted to live to New, uh, live in New York for a couple. Come on of years. in, dude. Well, I mean, we'll I time. still have the, I, I still have the energy. Thank you. I still have the energy for a big city. Yeah. I just, I've exhausted London for the time being. I think. Come uh, visit me for a week, man. But we'll I'm always, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It was my, it's always been my dream to live in New York, and I've never even, even been to New York. It's finally starting to normalize. So, you know, if, yeah. when, board, yeah. when borders open, dude, you, you can stay with me, man. Come anytime. For sure, yeah. Thank yeah. you, man. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to, to one day being there and doing a whole cross country and see America and then go south. And, um, and I just, I just I'm, I'm like trying to do that trip myself. So let me, we'll do the sprinter van. We'll rent <laughs> yes. one. We'll, we'll, we'll make a, we'll make a movie we'll out make of a it. Movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe that movie with Zach Galifianakis yeah, and, uh, yeah. and, and Rob, uh, Robert Downey Iron Jr. Yeah. Downey yeah, Jr. yeah, 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 yeah. That's that awesome. movie is probably one of my favorite comedies of all time. Oh, it's great. Well, was it Due Date? Due yeah, date. Due Date, Due Date. You know, yeah. it's been such an honor having you on, man. And I, I to wrap it up, you yeah. know, two yeah. final questions for you. You know, it's it's been a horrible year, not just for America with fascism on the rise, but with the pandemic and... <laughs> yeah you know, everything happening and, and, you know, for every actor or artist listening, the business stopped for a minute and, you know, it's only now, you know, you mentioned you did reshoots and shadow of bone and pandemic, and we're still kind of navigating that, you know, post, not even post pandemic, cause we're not out of it, but the, the production with the masks and the distancing, and now we have vaccination and, and people that aren't. Mm -hmm. So what's kept you inspired through this, this year plus few months that we've been in this man. Yeah, I've, I've, well, I've been working on stop on, on, uh, with Maria. Yeah. Um, of course, but also I, I was so bored that I started a sales company, a film oh. sales company. No <laughs> way. Yeah. And we, we bought a movie, um, uh, and we sold it in the U S and the, the, um, Germany and Japan. It's like a B movie, but it's, it's, it's uh, the, the director I did code red with actually. Oh, okay, really, cool. I really like his work. He's really cool and out there, you know, when in a, in the movie he does when, whenever somebody shoots somebody in the head, the guy does a triple backflip after he's shot in the head. So it's that kind of over the top. Oh, um, mutant amazing. Yeah. Pigs, mutant pigs. Uh, it's called bullets of justice. It's got Danny Trejo in it for like a oh, minute. I love Danny Trejo. And it's, it's it's honestly it's it's so bad on purpose yeah and there's Back some the great room. cgi there's some great action yeah, yeah there's some great action sequences but it's pigmen and you know 
um, um, Kazakhstanian lead actually and producer. Wow, and real real Kazakhstanian talent exists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you you would you should you should look for some Kazakhstan uh, Kazakhstani music and yeah. music videos. I think they're some of the leaders in in Asia and in in like the Russian speaking world of creativity and like the music they make, the music videos they make, the movies they make. Yeah. Uh, and and they have some TikTokers that are hilarious, like because wow. I can sort of represent some stuff. Like people there are so talented, and and I'm sure we're gonna be uh, actually seeing a wave of of more Eastern European and and and, and Central Asian um, um, performers in, in yeah. coming history. But yes. yeah, I've just been I've just been working on you know the management uh, company, uh, the the agency, developing and getting more clients, hiring an agent to do all the work because uh, I can't possibly manage everything. Yeah, you know, of course. Um, and and the sales company on the other hand, uh, and then auditioning a lot. Uh, at some point, the audition started. Yeah, so that's my next question. You obviously have this incredible project with Mark Strong, Shadow and Bone, for everyone listening, yeah. out now on Netflix. And yes. what, what else is in the arsenal? And what's interesting is for people now as well to 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 keep in mind, it was very slow getting approved. Uh, something you know to get approved for a role before, but now in the yeah. pandemic, I think I did the audition uh, for Temple in July, and I shot it in November. Wow. And I booked it in October or late October. So there's a, it's a bit slow, but I think, I think it always, it just matters to be seen and booking that room instead of that job is very important. And it, as, as long as you keep showing up with the best you can, that's, that's all you can do. But um, yeah, I think, I think it's get we see light in the tunnel with everybody getting vaccinated. And yeah. uh, I think soon it's going to get to normal ish. Um, but yeah, we just have to be strong, man. I think it's, it's so easy for actors compared to other people at the moment, because we're yeah. still resilient having that, uh, you know, living that freelancer life, like yeah. all the freelancers right now are like, Oh, it's nothing different than before. And everybody else yeah. playing on the job are like, Oh my God, what are we yeah, doing? Totally. And it's horrible. Uh, but I think artists are very resilient and we're going to, persevere and we're going to create it i think from limitation comes creativity and new ways of doing things and Ooh. you see the rise of a lot of these that this is a clip right here <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh for example rob savage directed and wrote and directed um a, a feature film called host yeah which was a, a zoom horror film and wow. it won, i think it was nominated for breakthrough producer um um bifa breakthrough film and uh, a Bulgarian actress actually is in it, Radina Drondova. Uh, wow. And and so there's there's a lot of uh, and it, there was a huge thing about that movie when it came out during the pandemic. Everybody was like, "Wow, this is great." Yeah. And so seize your moment is what I'd say to people. Like there there's no one way to do it. Yeah. Uh, and 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 find your own way. Find your niche. Find all, all the accents that you can learn. All the languages that you look like. Like, yeah. what nationalities do you look like? Do you, can you speak any of those languages? Can you at yeah. least sound in English like you have an accent from that place? Totally. Because I, if I want to be a Spanish guy, I would speak to you like this. Yeah. Um, and so, if I'm a Russian guy, I uh, I have different settings. I can be very over the top of a James Bond villain, yeah. and I could also make it a little more like I've studied in Europe, maybe in Switzerland. Uh, ah, got the, the masters. <laughs> you always, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. And I'm really obsessed with these things. I, for Shadow and Bone, I actually uh, developed my own accent, uh, which is old Rafkin, I call it. But it's, wow. it's basically, um, I call it fairy tale European, general yeah. fairy tale European. Yeah, yeah, accent. I like that. That's a great classification. And it was, you know, I was, I was going through the lines because they wanted me to do a, a Eastern European accent. I was like, ah. I've just done so many versions of New yeah. Zealand accent, uh, socioeconomically, uh, as I told you, like, did he go, did he learn from, uh, from school? Did he learn from Cartoon Network? Did he yeah. learn from private school in Switzerland? Uh, what's his situation? How does he talk? And then for Shadow and Bone, I was like working out, workshopping on my own, the, 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 the accent. And I was like, mm, a hard R kind of isn't good for failure. It kind of blocks his, it kind of, it's a full stop every time you say a hard R, I feel. Yeah. Uh, properly and it goes and the, the, the and I was like no that's too harsh I would have almost a, a, a bad American R yeah it would be like brother uh, like brother. it would be like uh, a soft R 
Yeah. But but you could still hear it's not quite American or something else. It's kind of like a European that speaks English, but you don't really know which part of Europe he's from. And I'm hiring you for all my coaching. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. There's a bit of a Mediterranean uh, kind of um, timber that I put on um, that were my idea of it really. And then how I think Antonio Banderas will sound as Pusty Boots is almost my anchor for Spanish, but I have a little bit of that mystique of Mediterranean. Then you have a little bit of a, you know, good English from the Scandinavian, um, you know, what, what, what a good Swedish speaker in English would sound like. Yeah. And then I've put a little bit of Eastern European. Dude, you are going to work so Austrian. much. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you are so, you guys are so much more fucking talented than us, man. Oh nah. my God. It's not even, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> we can do Boston accents and Southern accents. And yeah, here Dude, you are. That's, <laughs> that's, that's hard. That's, and even that's then difficult. they're bad. They're campy. You know, it's like, a, a, <laughs> I, won't, I won't name names, but like Oscar winners win Oscars for doing accents from the town they're from. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's at the end of the day, I think yeah. what's good about the industry now, and I think what people should 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 comfort a lot of actors who are different um, uh, and, and and are classified as different, uh, but now different is 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 what's winning you a lot of uh, yeah. uh, roles, right? So it's the time to celebrate your differentness yeah. and know that this is what makes you special, and not to be ashamed of it. Yeah, and and really leaning into that more. It's 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 true now more than ever before, and it's going to get truer and truer. Yeah. That we need to connect to what makes you you, yeah. and just show up with full honesty and and know that you have something to offer that nobody else does, and that's you. Yeah. Right. That's power. Yeah. You really are, and and I don't want to sound all kumbaya, but you really are unique. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's. I think that's the trick is bringing your uniqueness to a character rather than becoming somebody else. Totally. So and, and that's, and, and it now more than ever is the time of, does this actor's essence match what we envision for the part Yeah. rather than are they English or they're American? Are they Russian? Are they Italian? It doesn't, it's going to matter less and less with the, uh, as you see shadow and bonus dubbed in almost every European language. Oh, nobody, sure. almost nobody watches it in English in Europe. Wow. wow. <laughs> Which is weird, right? Yeah. Italian, French, Spanish. Did you dub uh, the other Portuguese. ones? No, sadly ah, not. Oh, that would be so I cool. wish I could do the yeah, Italian. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. The Italian ones. So, but but those countries have a, a culture of doing that. Of those actors that are hired to do those. Yeah. yeah. Like there's a, there in Italy, there's a guy who does all of De Niro movies. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen the does, photos with them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He only does a De Niro voice. There's a guy who does Al Pacino's voice. They oh, only wow. are booked for those movies because they're high level actors. As yeah. Well, recognizable I'm sure. voices. And the, 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 the art of dubbing in those countries is just so high level that you can't even see the lip syncing any different. Yeah, and you believe they, they're casting so well that I believe that this guy's speaking Italian, not totally. English, or, and you know, it's dubbed in Turkish and Russian. That's the beauty of of those streamers that they can, um, you know, it would be the same actually if it was in a, um, in a, in the movie theaters. Yeah, but, but but a lot of Western, especially uh, European countries, dub. Uh, the only countries that don't dub are the Balkans. Okay. Uh, Cause we're very pro America and we like to listen to the language and that's why we speak English. I think because we don't dub our yeah. things. So it's um, yeah. I think Same. now is the time of essence meets, you know, uh, uh, meets the role rather yeah. than any kind of, cause I think accent now is becoming a protected characteristic as well. Totally. Um, so you couldn't be turned down because you're Bulgarian or Mexican or it's, it's crazy. But the yeah. or Spanish or yeah. 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 Polish. So yeah, let's, let's celebrate it. And I think, you know, I hope I, uh, especially with fantasy worlds, what I love about shadow and bone is that it's not all, you know, like a, a, a ancient Rome movie where everybody speaks British and, yeah. uh, uh, and it's just more open to and inclusive of, of other people, of other performers. Yeah. Um, so there's so many different accents in the show and it never distracts you. People were yeah. like, no, it's the concerns great. are always like, oh, it's going to distract. No, it doesn't. No, it plays to those the, people to are part of, of our world, right? Yeah. So, yeah. New York, especially London, multicultural, um, huge cities that 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 you hear different accents, and it's a normal thing. Yeah. Why shouldn't it be, especially especially in a fantasy thing? 
Yeah. You just, yeah. and you just open it up to getting an, um, an actor from Bulgaria, an actor from Poland, an actor from the UK, an actor from America. You get star, you cr- get to create stars in all those markets. And I think studios are catching on to that, uh, that I, that, that yeah. knowledge I, that I, it makes sense to court those markets by including their own global talents within yeah. global productions. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Julian Kossoff, man, you're incredible, dude. You're a titan. Barbara Broccoli's getting that phone call right fucking now. You're you're Bond, dude. I'm putting Vegas odds on it. You know, I'm calling the MGM Grand. It's going to be please. awesome. Dude, come to New York. Let's let's do a play together. Let's do a movie. Let's we'll do it, man. have a time, man. And, and, I haven't and done dude, a play in so long that I really I really feel like it. Yeah, and 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 when the, the Mark Project comes out, come back on, man. I, I could talk to you for hours and hours. Dude, and for hours. sure. I can't wait for you to talk to, talk to you about that. Yeah, that, yeah. That, so that let, yeah, I feel let, like we've scratched the surface. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say to be continued. Yes, to yeah. be continued. All right, brother. So much love. You too, man. Peace out.